When America's public schools were envisioned, there were to be the breeding grounds for freedom and democracy. Those who contemplated our public schools, like Thomas Jefferson, thought they'd be the breeding grounds for freedom and all the things that we talk about, standing up for your rights. Unfortunately, now, the public schools are becoming the breeding grounds for a compliant citizenry. Increasingly, the moment young people walk into school, they find themselves under constant surveillance. They're photographed, fingerprinted, scanned, x-rayed, sniffed, and snooped on. Between metal detectors at the entrances, drug-sniffing dogs in the hallways, and surveillance cameras in the classrooms and elsewhere, many of America's schools look more like prisons than learning facilities. What is so sad about this is, for some reason, America's school children are being looked at, looked at as if they're criminals. Uh, everything that, let's say, George Orwell talked about, we use the phrase Orwellian society, is coming true. Where we're going to have a citizenry, they're going to be raised up to be cowed and, and afraid of authorities as they walk along the streets. In fact, what was once looked upon as childish behavior, such as getting into food fights, playing tag, doodling, hugging, kicking, and throwing temper tantrums, is now being criminalized. Whereas in the past, minor behavioral infractions at school, such as shooting spit wads, may have got you sent to the principal's office or in school detention or a phone call to your parents, today they're elevated to the level of criminal behavior with all that implies. Consequently, young people are now being forcibly removed by police officers from the classroom, they're handcuffed, they're put in the back of police squad cars and placed in police holding cells until their often frantic parents come to get them out. Sadly, what these kids wind up with are criminal records which follow them the rest of their lives. Since the mid-1990s at the Rutherford Institute, we've been fighting these cases. In fact, you should read my commentary called Arrested Development. It deals with this particular area at rutherford.org. But the cases are crazy. I mean, I thought uh, as we entered the, the 2000s or into the new millennium that things were going to change. But the cases are getting even crazier. Let me give you some examples. For example, in November 2011, a 14-year-old student in Brevard County, Florida, was suspended for hugging a female friend, an act which even the principal acknowledged as innocent. A 9-year-old in Charlotte, North Carolina, was suspended for sexual harassment after a substitute teacher overheard the child tell another student that the teacher was cute. A 6-year-old in Georgia was arrested, handcuffed, and suspended for the remainder of the school year after throwing a temper tantrum in class. A six-year-old boy in San Francisco was accused of sexual assault following a game of tag on the playground. A six-year-old in Indiana was arrested, handcuffed, and charged with battery after kicking a school principal. Twelve-year-old Alexa Gonzalez was arrested and handcuffed for dueling on a desk. Another student was expelled for speaking on a cell phone with his mother whom he had not spoken to in 30 days as she was being deployed to Iraq at, the t at that time. Four high school students in Detroit were arrested and handcuffed for, and taken to jail for participating in a food fight. They were charged with a misdemeanor with a potential for a 90-day jail sentence and a $500 fine. A high school student in Indiana was expelled after sending a profanity-laced tweet through his Twitter account after school hours. The school actually was conducting their own surveillance by tracking the tweeting habits of all students. One of the real culprits here is zero tolerance policies. Zero tolerance policies are a one size fits all regime where if the most minor infraction will get you thrown out of school. For example, a kid bringing nail clippers into school. We actually had a case for, in that situation where a young girl brought nail clippers in a very good student, passed them to a girl in the back of the classroom. The teacher saw the nail clippers. She was thrown out for a year and three months for violating the weapons policy. The same the very same thing that would happen to a kid who brought in a knife or a gun. As a result, these policies are now interpreted so broadly as to crack down on spit wads, Tweety Bird keychains, and search breath mints, all of which constitute contraband of one kind or another. In some jurisdictions, carrying cough drops, wearing black lipstick, or dyeing your hair blue are expellable offenses. If you were going to set up an Orwellian state that was controlled, a police state, where would you start? Obviously the schools. You start with the young people, you train them, you get them used to being in a police state. When they go up and they live, live their lives on the streets, that's what they're going to be, uh, be accustomed to. They'll allow the police to violate their Fourth Amendment rights, pull them over, search them, all things which our Constitution says the police can't do. They're going to be doing that, folks, unless we reverse the trend. 
So where we're headed, folks, is a compliant citizenry, and it doesn't look good. As the renowned author Hunter S. Thompson once wrote, coming of age in a fascist police state will not be a barrel of fun for anybody, much less for people like me who are not inclined to suffer Nazis gladly and feel only content for the cowardly flag suckers who would gladly give up their outdated freedom to live for the mess of pottage that they have been condemned to believing will be freedom from fear.